Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. In what police confirmed to be yet another terror attack, a 19-year-old Palestinian who entered Israel illegally stabs and critically wounds an Israeli man in the central city of Yavne. Hamas and Iranian officials hold meetings in Lebanon, reaffirming their joint commitment to Israel's destruction. U.S. President Donald Trump signs into law legislation that imposes new sanctions on Iran, a move the Islamic Republic says aims to derail the nuclear agreement. In what police confirmed to be yet another terror attack, a 19-year-old Palestinian who entered Israel illegally stabbed and critically wounded an Israeli man in the central city of Yavne. When the attacker tried to flee the scene, pedestrians managed to overpower him until police units arrived and arrested the assailant. Police and the Palestinian assailant, a resident of a West Bank village that is located next to the city of Hebron, confessed to entering Israel with the aim of committing a terror attack. The Israeli victim suffered of multiple stab wounds and was taken to a nearby medical facility where he underwent surgery this morning. Doctors said he is currently fighting for his life, but noted that they consider his condition as stable. Now to Israel's northern neighbor Lebanon, where senior Hamas official Saleh al aruri held a meeting with a senior Iranian foreign ministry official, Hussein Amir Abdullahiyan. The meeting, which was first published by Hezbollah-affiliated journalists, reportedly focused on regional cooperation between the internationally recognized terror group Hamas and the Islamic Republic of Iran. During the meeting, the Iranian official also emphasized that Tehran supports Hezbollah, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad under the umbrella of Muslim unity and the fight against Israel, which he referred to as the Zionist entity. Amir Abdullahiyan also took the opportunity to rebuke regional Arab nations for their efforts to normalize relations with the Jewish state, including, among others, the Islamic Republic's arch-rival Saudi Arabia. Hamas's senior official al aruri in turn praised Iran for its support for the Palestinian fight against Israel and vowed that Hamas will continue to battle the Jewish state until the goals of the Palestinian people are met, which he said includes the conquering of Jerusalem. Now in other news, U.S. President Donald Trump signed into law legislation that imposes new sanctions against Iran, along with sanctions against Russia and North Korea. The new sanctions seek to ban anyone dealing with Iran's ballistic missile program from entering the United States and blocks financial transactions on properties held in the U.S. by people associated with the program. Even though Iran has yet to issue a formal response to the new sanctions imposed against it by the United States, Tehran's Deputy Foreign Minister Syed Abbas Arakchi declared the American move was seeking to destroy the JCPOA, which is the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, also known as the Nuclear Agreement, which Tehran reached with world powers, including the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain, plus Germany, to limit the Islamic Republic's nuclear program in exchange for lifting crippling international sanctions against its economy. The Iranian deputy foreign minister vowed his country will show a very clever reaction, yet refrained from mentioning specifics. Meanwhile in Washington, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson accused Iran of violating the spirit of the nuclear agreement, stressing that Tehran's ongoing ballistic missile testing cannot be excluded from the JCPOA because those missiles are capable of carrying nuclear warheads. It is about nuclear programs, but there's another part of that agreement that talks about the fact that with this agreement, Iran will become a good neighbor. Now, I'm paraphrasing a lot of language. They'll become a good neighbor. That Iran is called upon to no longer develop its ballistic missiles. There's a lot of things that people expected would happen in agreeing to this arrangement on the nuclear program, including all the benefits that Iran would get up front. And I think the general view, and I would say it's not just ours, but the, the view of many others is, Iran has not been a good neighbor in the region. It has not stopped its ballistic missile program. And so the spirit of the agreement has been violated.
The American top diplomat also took the opportunity to emphasize that the nuclear agreement of 2015 was not a basis to define the relationship with Iran, which Tillerson stressed continued to destabilize the Middle East and beyond, a reality that must be confronted by the United States and its allies. We come onto the scene and we said, you know, that agreement doesn't speak to a lot of the problems we have, we have with Iran. So I don't, I don't want people to think that's what defines uh, either the relationship or the policy with Iran is the JCPOA. Iran continues these efforts. They are persistent in their efforts to exert their influence across the Middle East. And it is our intent working with our allies in the region to push back on Iran's expansionist uh, efforts to destabilize areas, particularly Yemen, Iraq, Syria, but we also see them in the uh, theaters of Afghanistan. Now to the ongoing conflict in Syria, where the Russian embassy in Damascus was reportedly targeted in a mortar attack by rebel forces, in which Moscow said none of the embassy staff were hurt. Two of the mortar shells landed and exploded on the territory of the embassy, while another two exploded near its outside perimeters. Two снаряда упали на территорию российской дипмиссии. Еще два разорвались в непосредственной близости от внешнего периметра загранучреждения. По счастливой случайности обошлось без жертв. Имеется незначительный материальный ущерб. Решительно осуждаем террористические атаки против российского дипломатического представительства в Дамаске. Хотели бы еще раз напомнить, что Россия неоднократно привлекала внимание к варварскому характеру обстрелов, которым террористы на регулярной основе подвергают жилые кварталы Дамаска и других густонаселенных сирийских городов. Москва, которая вошла в военный конфликт в Сирии несколько лет назад в поддержку президента Башар Асад, продолжала продолжать, что она как ее политика ее непрерывной борьбы против террористов в Сирии. Now to the Syrian border with Lebanon, where buses carrying Syrian militants and refugees continue to leave the region and route to the rebel-held Idlib province in Syria, as part of a deal made after the Iranian-backed Hezbollah routed the Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front from their last stronghold at the Lebanese frontier, which Hezbollah declared as a great victory, considering the strategic location it conquered and the tough terrain of that area. بعد تحرير هذه المناطق سوف ينعكس الموضوع الأمني إيجابا على لبنان وطلعنا بالملموس على المساحات الهائلة التي حررتها المقاومة بسرعة قياسية وبكفاءة عالية وبتضحيات وبإصرار ومثل ما شايفين يعني منطقة جغرافية العسكرية صعبة كتير مما يعني أن المقاومة قامت بإنجاز جديد وانتصار جديد an official Hezbollah statement said that some 7,000 Syrians, including 1,000 militants, their families and refugees are to leave the Lebanese town of Al-Sal and the surrounding border area and head to the rebel strongholds of Idlib as the Iranian-backed militia continues to push rebels out of their conquered territories. The transfer echoes deal struck within Syria, in which Damascus has shuttled rebels and civilians to Idlib and other opposition areas. Such evacuations have helped Syrian President Bashar Assad recapture several rebel bastions over the past year. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps.
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.